Hello, hi. We, I'm Paolo Celotta. We are uh, kicking off uh, with uh, this uh, AAV conversation 2020. Is, uh, today our guest is, uh, is uh, Sonia uh, Livingston. Hello, Sonia. Hello, Paolo. The, uh, Sonia is a, is a researcher and a professor at the Department of Media and uh, Communications at the London School of Economics. Uh, she has published uh, many books, uh, 20 or so, on media, especially on children uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the digital uh, uh, environment. Uh, many things and articles and publications also more broadly on, on uh, media literacy issues. Uh, she is an advisor of the UK government, the European Commission, the European Parliament, the UN, the Council of Europe. Sonia, you are advising everyone. Huh? <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> she, she's also directing many, many projects and initiatives. You can find all, all the information that are relevant in, in, uh, online. Her uh, latest uh, work is... Uh, uh, parenting for a digital uh, future that is this book uh, and uh, that uh, that is uh, uh, somehow about how parents uh, should manage the digital uh, devices of uh, their uh, uh, children i have read it uh, and uh, it really resonates a lot with uh, many media literacy issues uh, uh, that uh, that we we have dealt uh, uh, also together in the last uh, 10, 15 years, uh, too many maybe, is uh, before I, I, I give you the floor, uh, uh, I just uh, I want to, to um, as well as, uh, as uh, obviously welcoming everyone, uh, is uh, we have uh, 78 uh, people uh, registered. They are coming uh, uh, from all uh, many different countries. Uh, is, uh, there are some names that I recognize of colleagues and friends, uh, some other uh, 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 teachers and, and uh, students or people of uh, the media literacy community. So the AVI Conversation 2020 is, uh, is online as everything uh, is uh, uh, these days. Is uh, our conferences? Uh, they are uh, made with the spirit of uh, um, to get uh, to offer a space uh, for uh, to to get information and inspiration. In this case, uh, from the most uh, well-known uh, international expert. So it, it's quite uh, a, a service, I think, uh, for our participants. I feel privileged myself uh, that in uh, forty minutes or so is. Uh, you will share your uh, your experience, uh, your work of years, uh, while uh, will uh, will uh, no is uh, stay very comfortably in uh, in uh, our uh, uh, homes. Uh, the I, I think that uh, that uh, I hope that uh, that the participants uh, will find useful uh, is and uh, these uh, these reflections, and we'll see what it will emerge from uh, from uh, uh, this. So, um, Sonia, the, 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 the book that I was referring to is the result of a four years long uh, research, correct? Right. And uh, um, you have done it with, uh, with your colleague, uh, Alicia Blam Ross, uh, and uh, you describe uh, parents a bit as acrobats in, uh, in uh, that struggle a bit uh, in uh, to find uh, a balance in between uh, what certain are saying, uh, oh, well, it's a risky environment, uh, to, to, they uh, should be safe online. Uh, and, uh, and on the other end, uh, this is the opportunity, your children cannot be left beyond, uh, is, uh, is uh, the, the uh, so is, uh, is a parents that try their best, uh, how do they cope with, with those tensions? Can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, delighted. Um, and uh, I might say it was a, it was an absolute pleasure to spend um, some years really trying to understand parents' experience. Um, for those who who know my previous research, I've often, uh, I think, like many, uh, have interviewed parents as a kind of source of understanding of what happens with children and how do children engage with digital media. 
Um, and this is the book where I really wanted to stand back and uh, properly recognize parents as people in their own right, not, not just as a source of information about their children. Um, and um, doing these interviews with, with parents, I should say parents, um, we interviewed them in and around London. Uh, and we really tried to talk to as many and diverse um, parents, different kinds of families and different ways of living as we could. Um, and it was just so interesting to recognize the diversity among them, because so often in policy world or in public world, we talk about parents as if they're all the same. They're absolutely not. Um, and then to try to find a way of recognizing the struggle. I love, Paolo, I love your, your metaphor of acrobats. It's more creative than ours, actually. But we, um, we came out proposing that parents are, um, some of them are really embracing the digital world and they have many good reasons for doing that. Um, some are resisting uh, and some are embracing and resisting at the same time. You know, these are, these are practices that, that parents um, differently engage in. But most of all, what they do is they try to find a balance. And the balance is the, is the acrobatic moment because actually balancing is, is hard. Uh, yeah. And they're always doing these kind of little calculations. Is this good? Is this too much? Should I pull back from this? Should I do, provide more of this? It's, it's demanding parenting in a, in a digital age. Is, uh, is, uh, in fact, I was wondering about that. Is, uh, is, uh, I think somewhere else you have written about uh, that sometimes the issue is not as such a parenting, uh, the digital device is, is parenting, uh, period. And uh, the, the, it seems to me that um, parents, uh, not only they are not uh, fully trusting their children, uh, but uh, they, they seem to be, not, not to trust themselves, is, uh, is uh, they are looking for, uh, to read books uh, or, or to, to uh, online, uh, to, to, to uh, quick uh, solution to, to fix, uh, uh, I mean, a problem that, uh, that probably is, is not the, the kind of problem they, they should fix uh, is... Uh... Well, I mean, I think the, the, you know, talking to parents and getting to know not just what they think about digital technologies, but what they think about, you know, what is going on in their lives, um, you know, it made it very vivid for me how, how many struggles they have and how many uncertainties they face. And of all the struggles and uncertainties, technology seems to kind of twist the knife. It seems to be the fastest changing, hardest to understand, most, um, you know, introducing so many risks and yet such promise. So it sort of intensifies things. So um, yes, it, in a way they don't trust themselves or their children, but I think the more important thing is this is just, you know, the, the, so many other things that parents have to contend with education or food or you know healthy um uh, lifestyle these things are uh, the fast this is this is the fastest changing this is why, so why is it uh, is a sorry maybe is a, is a bit a silly question but uh, why is it that the parents want their uh, children successful is uh, is uh, yeah. There is a problem with that, no? Is uh, is uh, you you cannot blame the children if we force them uh, to go. I've noticed uh, is at uh, this time uh, of uh, COVID uh, when uh, schools were closed, uh, mm -hmm. is uh, one of the main worry or problem was uh, that then uh, children, uh, small ones, are uh, being at home, uh, the parents uh, couldn't work. So it seems that we are sending our children to school not to learn, uh, but just uh, to, I mean, uh, to, to to get rid of them. Uh. Well, I I, but we shouldn't we shouldn't um, we shouldn't be uh, too persuaded by the headlines, I think. I mean, yes, that was the media story. School is a kind of babysitting so that parents can go to work and the economy can can run. But I think to be fair to parents, you know, we ask them all, uh, look back at your own childhood, which, of course, is often not digital or not very digital. And then look forward. What do you want? And then parents say, you know, I want my child to be happy. I want them to have what they need. Then they're, they're not really so competitive and ambitious, I think. But so the media they, they, tells them they should be. Yeah. They 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 behave better than how the media picture them. Um, I absolutely think so. In fact, I think that the media have a very negative image of parents. 
and they portray parents as you know a kind of deficit theory parents are always failing in the wrong anything that goes wrong in the home the parents are blamed um so and the parents are constantly being you know there were all these instructions do this do more of this do less screen time more technology more education it's what about screen time uh, in fact in that uh, in that respect what do you think about it uh, is it a good way to 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 regulate the the, the, the how the children uh -huh. spend uh... no absolutely not but i was you know i think in in some kind of expert communities the research world policy world people have been moving away from screen time as a it's just so crude it doesn't tell you anything about what is the content or the mode of engagement but for parents it's it's an instruction that has really come through and they have you know they're told in so many of the media um two hours or one hour or not before eight years old or not before after bed whatever um, so they get all these instructions and they are told, you know, completely contradictory, limit it, but get your child ahead in the digital world, you know, don't let them have so much, but the future jobs will all be digital. So they are, they are stuck in a world of contradiction, really. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, the, the, this, uh, yeah, this, uh, Policing and monitoring uh, is uh, is a bit uh, no, it's a, a very rigid system, uh, and this uh, no, is the the issue about uh, quantitative things uh, that are easy to to measure and to notice, and uh, other things uh, that is uh, you know, is uh, more qualitative uh, are, are more difficult to to see. If I would ask you, no, is on. In uh, in uh, Alto, yeah, there is not a recipe, but uh, which would be your uh, three tips uh, for the moms and dads uh, that are out there? What what would you say? Uh, so we um, in in the book we recommended, uh, yeah, exactly, a move from a quantitative shift to a qualitative um, lens, if you like, um, thinking about uh, the content of children's media engagement thinking about the context of their lives, how does particular media fit into what they're doing in their day, and also thinking about connections, because media build very important connections for young people, and especially during COVID, we really see the, the imperative to rely on media for connections, but those can be problematic. So it's about more nuanced judgments, but perhaps, you know, overarching, if I can add one more, more tip, it's about, um, giving up on the metaphor of policing. And what we hear all the time is parents should police their children, monitor their children, spy on their children, control that you know, give up on the police and control metaphor and move towards a metaphor, a model of engagement and discussion, because children have some smart things to say about this as well. And to be considered as, as uh, fully as, as uh, uh, people, no? as you were mentioning before, in their full capacity, yeah. is uh, we, we, yeah, we are all people uh, as uh, teachers and parents and, uh, and uh, policymakers, obviously. Is, uh, but uh, it doesn't seem uh, that uh, we are acting uh, together for uh, the, the common good, isn't it? Is, uh, the 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 oh, why is that there are a number of things that should be obvious to anyone huh? but uh, but uh, either they are not huh? is uh, and so we have to raise awareness uh, of this uh, of uh, is, uh, is, uh, some of these issues uh, mm -hmm. or uh, they they as uh, they don't benefit uh, someone uh, in in the short term or immediately mm -hmm. namely Policymakers, also policymakers, I think is uh, is uh, the the concept that you have mentioned before applies. Uh, there are also good ones, obviously. Yeah. Is uh, the and the possibly is uh, and or probably more than uh, than how the, the the media picture them uh, is uh, the no is uh, to promote the interest of people uh, should be something uh, that I feel uh, is I, I'm saying. Uh, as a responsibility from from uh, an NGO, no, is a AVI, is a European Association. We work on that, uh, and uh, and uh, we we find instead that that, uh, that we are a bit of an Indian reserve uh, when uh, when everybody agrees with us, but uh, but uh, there is no much support for civil society organization. Why is that? You think? 
Um, so uh, that was lots of questions in one, if I may. Um, let me go back to the start of your um, question, because I think you raised something really interesting about um, uh, generational tensions and generational differences. So my uh, so I don't really study anything apart from families and media, but my sense is that in other areas of social change, there aren't the same um, generational tensions, but in relation to the pace of development of digital media, the frame from the very beginning was children against parents. Children know more and parents know nothing, or children are uh, innocent and going to be corrupted and parents are responsible. You know, whatever the frame, it somehow put them against each other. And that language of digital immigrants and digital natives probably did the most damage there. And, you know, I was part of it. We all went and got the evidence that said, yes, the children understand so much more than the parents or, and we admired the children for it, but it also created this tension. And the tension has ultimately proved, I think, really unproductive because what, what you're arguing for and what I would argue for is much more mutual respect between parents and children as they figure out for themselves, for each other, you know, for the family, for the society, what is what is going to be unproductive. Um, and even the NGOs have sort of aligned around that, the parent organizations, the child rights organizations, somewhere else, the media organizations, you know, they um, this is not a fight. This is there is actually a shared um interest and a shared commitment, but we've all come from a difficult starting point, I think. Yeah, is I, I remember is no, is about this uh, fragmentation uh, is uh, that is uh, the no, is uh, conducted somehow by the analysis even in good faith. I remember when I was watching a movie with a friend of mine, and then we we came out and commented, and uh, he was starting saying, "Yeah, the picture is good, the actor uh, is uh, did uh, well, and uh, the 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 lights uh, were is uh, no, is uh, analyzing it uh, meant to." To destroy it, and uh, is uh, in, in, uh, in which was not uh, really rendering a, a good service to to the movie in the case, uh, and uh, but the system, uh, yeah, obviously people uh, they do it's easier to focus on problems or problematic aspects. Uh, is uh, but again I, I go back to what I was mentioning before. Why is it happening for you? Is uh, that way? If should be obvious that should should happen differently. So, so one of the kind of key themes of the of the book um, it reflects something that I've been thinking for a long time about, uh, which I think is very important for those of us who focus our professional lives on media, which is to say that um, the media are obsessed by the media, um, the uh, and of course that makes everyone obsessed and. The digital has become um, a space, a focus, a domain in which many tensions in society play out. But what motivates those tensions and what grounds them lies elsewhere, lies very often elsewhere. Uh, and what really came out for me in interviewing um, so many of those parents um, was how we don't talk enough about the other things that they are struggling with. We, you know, we had parents who were migrating or um, living in relative poverty or uh, struggling with cultural um, uh, status that doesn't fit the society or um, just all kinds of things that, are, or family breakdown. You know, there are so many things that people are dealing with, um, but what society often tells them is the answer is, so sort out the screen time or find a, a program you can all enjoy together or um, get this new technology and your child will um, you know, be on the right path. So uh, all kinds of things are going uh, uh, difficult, but technology seems to be a, a sort of a quick fix solution. Have this app, have this service, have this new, yeah, you know, this yeah. new thing. Um, and I think it's it's distracting us in a way. Um, not that the media are unimportant. I think they're vital, um, and a critical lens on them is vital. But they are not the only conversation to be having around young people. And the media kind of add to this endless focus on themselves, really. Yeah, is uh, is uh, I I found uh, uh, 
funny is uh, when uh, when in the book you mention about the fact that there is uh, this uh, moral judgments uh, even uh, now is when the parents go to the playground uh, and they yeah. say well I do this with my kid and uh, other parents uh, they are quick to say oh well is uh, this is too permissive or this is too rigid or uh, I do completely the opposite and uh, yeah then you go back home and <laughs> you are not really sure what uh, what uh, what to do so this uh, also this moral tension uh, is of pressure uh, is uh, is uh, truly truly understandable uh, is uh, the but but to me it goes back to 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 basics you know is that the the nature of people or or issues that are a bit uh, systemic uh, is uh, is you know, is that the yeah uh, education uh, we we mentioned about you know, is, uh, should be reformed somehow is you know, is is to in various uh, in various forms so we all agree but uh, my kids are studying on the same books uh, that I was using uh, 40 years ago. Is so mm-hmm. maybe in UK you are uh, you are uh, certainly more uh, more advanced on that. Uh, is uh, we are not moving. I mean, it's a bit frustrating. So I think um, so. It was a, it was a key insight in the book that sense of um, parents feeling isolated um, and perhaps a, a a sort of a contradiction because. To the outside world, to the non-parents and the policymakers and to the media, parents look like they're all together. They're all together at the school gate. They're all together in their, you know, worry about whether to give a nine-year-old a smartphone. Um, but talk to them and they're all separate and they they feel that they're judging each other and they don't feel sufficiently supported um, by each other or by others. Um, so in a one sense, that's a kind of a personal um, uh, experience that's their phenomenology but in the other you know in a more societal sense as I think you're 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 pointing out too um, it is the state of society that people are facing the um, struggles they have um, often without voice and without um, uh, structural resource so in the book we kind of analyze you know how do parents get to this point um, and what over the last, as well as the rise of technology and the digitalization of everything, we've also seen the reduction of welfare. We've also seen um, the reduction of um, kind of community and structural supports around families. Um, we've seen the way in which, you know, because of demographic shifts and people moving so much more, uh, they are without their parents nearby or their you know, traditional networks nearby. So there are there are kind of big structural things that parents are living through that put them on their own. Um, and then they are somehow told, you know, they're all, they're all in the same boat, but they don't feel it. Um, and it's absolutely a political um, uh, societal shift that has, that has put them where they are. And uh, if, uh, if, uh... Mm, I, I should remind, I forgot to, to do it at the very beginning, uh, that if people want to ask questions, uh, they can use uh, the question and answer uh, section. The, if we go towards the, the, the political aspect, uh, which, uh, which is the change that you would like to see happening? What, uh, um, no, in this uh, digital environment, uh, if uh, you would... Uh, what would you be pleased with? What, what is the thing that you think uh, should happen first? Uh, is uh, I wouldn't want to want uh, a number of recommendations <laughs> there are, there are, because there are so many right. things I would want to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so okay, let me start. Let me offer one very simple one. Um, uh, if your uh, parents have no idea where to go. They have no idea where to go for guidance. And I say that knowing that there are many NGOs out there who are trying to offer some advice. And I really respect the NGOs that are trying to give parents guidance, but talk to a parent and they don't know where to go. Um, And what they see is a a kind of um, an information overload, but no signposts and no um, trust signals. Um, And so they feel overwhelmed and so they kind of fall back on themselves. So I would like, um, you know, I would like um, our big public service broadcasters to have a for parents button on the homepage. 
I would like our big um, search engines to have a for parents button on the homepage because children are one in three of the media, you know, the online media uh, users and parents are probably one in three or even one in two. They're not a minority, they're not invisible. They could, you know, let's just make it so much easier because they are the most busy people. Um, and it, it's, it's shaming really, all this effort to build resources. Um, and yet, you know, I talked to a, 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 a mum or a dad um, who says, well, where do I start? And I don't know where to tell them. Is uh, the the is uh, is nice uh, and useful uh, that you mention uh, very practical things. Sometimes uh, the 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 conversations that uh, we we have uh, in in other fora is very rhetorical. So mm. uh, and uh, and then uh, it fails uh, to 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 address uh, what can be improved. Uh, is uh, is uh, uh, and uh, and indeed there are things uh, that uh, that. Uh, there are people, I think, in uh, in all uh, in all uh, no, is, uh, amongst the different stakeholders, indeed, that, that would be keen, I think, or uh, is uh, to to adopt uh, a number of issues, a number of of, uh, of uh, measures, like the one that you have uh, you have mentioned. Why not? Uh, or at least let's have a debate, and then uh, they will have to explain why they don't do it. Mm. Is uh, even more, I would say, is uh, from uh, from. Uh, we, in order to move from here, if uh, we raise awareness uh, for uh, a parent, for instance, uh, to say, oh, well, uh, there is not a button uh, on, uh, on my TV screen uh, or, or on my social media, then if uh, these parents are uh, numerous enough, uh, we will find uh, a politician that uh, will, uh, will uh, because he has a benefit, uh, to put those things forward, no? is uh, so. I think we have uh, we have uh, we have to be uh, uh, very very uh, pragmatic. Uh, is uh, is uh, otherwise uh, we risk to have uh, the same uh, discussion uh, in ten years' time. Uh, mm -hmm. Is uh, in, and uh, and uh, although I have to say that there are things, uh, good things are are, are uh, happening. Uh, my main worry, and I will ask uh, which is yours, uh, is uh, that uh, things, uh, in fact, uh, don't move much. Uh, is uh, that we don't take uh, the the opportunities that uh, no, is uh, rhetorically technology can can offer, uh, but we focus only on, on things uh, that don't work. And uh, and uh, we we fail a bit uh, to to take uh, the the, the no, is uh, some of these opportunities. What what would what would it be your main worry? Well, um, uh, I'll comment quickly on what you said, and then I'll tell you my my main worry. So, I, just to comment on what you said, I think one reason that things don't move is that we are in a um, a world where there are many interesting and constructive initiatives being tried out. And very rarely are they evaluated and very rarely do we learn from the experience, good or bad, of what works, what helps, what, what makes a difference. So we, we are, um, you know, we're a perpetual fountain of, of new ideas and enthusiasm very often across, especially across the kind of civil society sector, um, but there is not enough learning. And so we're always starting from the same beginning again. To me, this is um, something that could just be fixed tomorrow if we evaluated all initiatives and we shared our learning and we especially learned from our mistakes. But my big worry, Paolo, is um, that any talk about children or parents or families um, sounds like some kind of break on um, innovation and um, the profitability of the industry. It sounds like something kind of um, expensive and annoying from the sidelines to say, hello, could you stop and offer some guidance to parents? Could you stop and make this service more child friendly? Could you stop and explain to people how the media work before rushing off and changing everything again? Um, so to in many other, um, you know, very influential and important forums where people in suits are making, you know, powerful decisions. Um, all the things that our community wants to say are just not heard because, 
you know, they have to have the first mover advantage. They have to move fast and break things. They have to, you know, get out there and change the, uh, promote the, the, the industry in a particular way. So I just worry that we are um, uh, irritants, really, not, not, not sufficiently heard at all. And not, not to mention the people that, you know, you and I and others try to represent who are just simply unheard mm. in, in this mm. world of rapid digital innovation. Mm. We, we, yeah, is uh, is uh, we we obviously have uh, a, a responsibility. You no, know, is also the responsibility of the speaker uh, is uh, towards uh, the audience. Uh, if you don't, you know, it's like the writer. Uh, if uh, if his books are not read, uh, I mean, it's not the fault of the audience. Uh, is uh, at one point uh, the European Commission uh, move from media literacy to film literacy. I don't know yeah. if you remember this is, uh, and this was the result of uh, promoting European movies mm -hmm. is, uh, is uh, uh, versus uh, movies that were coming from somewhere else in the world. Uh, and uh, the main uh, piece of strategy was uh, to, uh, and they call it um, uh, film education, uh, to make uh, the audience appreciating uh, European movies uh, is uh, like uh, not, targeting them, it was uh, a, 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 no, educating uh, in, in a very commercial uh, uh, way. I think that, uh, that I don't know whether this was, uh, was a very, very successful. Uh, but yeah, is uh, we all share res responsibility, is uh, we all have uh, different roles. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but I appreciate people like you that is, uh, is uh, uh, not only obviously expert within uh, the, the domain, but having followed those, uh, those dossier and discussion uh, for uh, some time now, yeah. you are able uh, to point, uh, no, so to describe, I think uh, that uh, a few years ago we had uh, a meeting uh, talking about uh, the future of media literacy. Now we can call it different, but it's the same stuff. Uh, yeah. Is uh, what should be done, what should not, uh, and uh, certain things have happened, uh, many more should, I mean, is, is uh, necessarily, I think, is uh, there is a sense of urgency now that, uh, that they feel. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so... Le, le... But I think even when we had that conversation um, some years ago, and we've had various conversations over the years, I think um, uh, there is always a sense that there is a very small space in the kind of the the public and policy attention for anything like media literacy and we have to fight. We could have film literacy or we could have advertising literacy or we could have data literacy, but you know, there's a very small window we have to fit into. Yeah. Um, and I think what, you know, I don't want to trade any of these. I think they're all important. And I think the public, um, uh, the audience, uh, young, old, all should and kind of want to understand better this mediated world. Um, but the challenge is to find the spaces within the structures of society, in the education system, in the public um, service media system, um, wherever it is, you know, how do we find this sufficient space that all of those different kinds of literacy can not only be promoted, but also support each other? Because as you say, it's, um, it's getting more and more important and COVID-19 has meant, you know, everything is online, everything is mediated. This conversation, our every conversation is mediated now. Um, yeah. Understanding the stuff of it, understanding what is, you know, what is the frame, the device, the Zoom, the everything is, is just more important than ever. And, uh, and uh, it is, yeah, now it's, uh, it's been in the jargon of the commission and uh, the media nowadays is a uh, is, uh, uh, terminology like disinformation or the importance of fact-checking uh, is, uh, no, is becoming prominent, but in the end uh, is the same. Uh, is yeah. the same stuff, isn't it? So it's uh, is uh, so we could say thank you to fake news in a very cynical way because it has at least put on the agenda something that, uh, yeah. If they'd done for, if if people had promoted media literacy ten or fifteen years ago, maybe we would not have had two thousand sixteen. Well, po 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 possibly is uh, is uh, we. we... We, yeah, we, for sure, there is a lot to do is uh, I'm sure that, uh, that uh, we'll, uh, we'll find uh, many allies on this. I have uh, uh, um, some questions. I, um, is uh, uh, Susie, 
uh, Jones is asking, how do you think parents can be can feel less isolated? Mm. Um, that's a great question, especially now, I think, when parents are really feeling um, very isolated and struggling with 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 so much. Um, well, Susie, I don't I don't have um, all the answers to parents. I think what um, what they would say is one thing they would say is, um, can we change the climate of discussion to make it less judgmental, less critical, so that people are less fearful of saying what it is that they are dealing with? COVID nineteen has been quite helpful in in that way, but. One of the th one of I just give you an anecdote that that I think will resonate. Um, when in the days when we could all go to cafes or eat out occasionally, um, if we if we had their funds, um, or even going on a bus, there was this lens that had, had had come to dominate. Of look at that parent; she's given her phone to the three year old. Look at that parent; she's on her own phone and she doesn't see her children in front of her, or he doesn't see. That we, we've become used to an incredibly kind of um, negative language in which we all judge each other. Um, and I think we can we can stop it, you know, we can all work to, to change that. Um, but then um, to overcome isolation is always about finding places where people can be together and where they can understand each other better. And those, um, of course, should be in our communities, but now they can also be online. And so again, I ask, um, where can parents go to meet each other and share their, their struggles? And there are some really great online forums where they can do that. And there are some great kind of digital networks and some of the parents in our book go to those. And there are some, you know, stories of, of people who are on their own all day with their children and their domestic demands. But in the evening, they can go and they can talk on their, um, you know, on their parent blog or in a in a uh, a group on social media somewhere, and it's sustaining. It really helps. And so we shouldn't say, "Look, they're just on a screen." We should recognise they might be getting the support they really need and encourage it, not fret about it. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, of course, as as you mentioned before, is you know, is, it also depends on the socioeconomic background uh, that uh, that uh, each uh, families and parents is coming from, and uh, the access uh, to, to 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 certain of of these uh, uh, tools. Uh, but yeah, is uh, many things that probably can be done also analogically, no? Is or um, meeting in the park, uh, or why not? As well as uh, as other ways is. Uh, Roberta is asking whether you think that there is a generational issue as yeah. parents today do not have previous models to, to, to learn from. Yes, I, absolutely. And that's one of the, the, the book's findings. So we, in addition to talking to parents, we also did a national survey, a UK survey of parents. And that was very clear that when parents worry about what to feed their child or how to deal with bedtime or homework, they can um, more often than not turn to their own parents or their own, um, the older people in their family. But when it comes to the di digital, they can't, um, much less. And not only can they not turn to them, but that older generation is also often very judgmental of the laissez-faire, attitude of the younger generation. So I think, um, yeah, there's a lot of grandparenting support going on. I know a lot of grandparents are doing childcare these days. It's becoming very important. Um, so I think it's really important that they are also part of these um, negotiations about the value and the um, risks of digital media, not, not kept out and uh, and and um, they they too need media literacy. Um, so yes, uh, and of course, parents look back on their own childhood for their guidance, and the digital media were not there in the same way. So it's a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, is that is that also needs to step in and and guide. Yeah. Is uh, is uh, when when you write that is uh, the parents are negotiating democratically. 
mm. with uh, their respective uh, uh, children. Uh, I mean, it's a bit uh, exhausting, isn't it? Uh, is... <laughs> Negotiating everything is exhausting. We know this in all our relationships, actually. We know this in our equal relationships, not in our, you know, our hierarchical ones, perhaps at work for many people don't have to bother, but in our equal relationships, now that includes our children, it's an endless negotiation. Actually, that links to a Johan's question, if I can uh, go there, who asks whether how, how much this sense of parental isolation is worldwide. Um, and uh, in another project I, I do called Global Kids Online, we um, I work with partners in many different parts of the world to try to understand the, um, the way in which children go online and the role uh, includes the role of parents. And I think what that's taught me is there are very different parenting cultures around the world and very different family cultures around the world. And the, you know, I talk in the book about the, the democratic family. It's a very Western concept. Uh, and um, Anthony Giddens, who, who, who talks about it, you know, says this is a, a shift in the European model, really, from a more hierarchical family with authoritarian parents very often and children who do what they're told or should. Um, and this democratic family is exhausting. It's back to the acrobatic. You know, everyone is doing the balancing and the negotiating. Um, but it is a particular model. And... Um, in many other parts of the world, there are different conceptions of the parent-child relation and the digital is part of that. It gets caught up in that. And it often becomes the, um, the kind of the terrain, the, the medium through which generational tensions are expressed uh, and parental authority is expressed. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, no, uh, your your, uh, your uh, research has been uh, conducted in UK and uh, that is, uh, yeah, children are children, people are people, regardless of where they come from. But indeed, there must be, you know, is there some sort of, as you have mentioned, differences in terms of, of uh, culture, education. And um, uh, at the same time, uh, there must be the majority of things that are common. Uh, you know, a parent uh, always try to do his best for, for his kids. So there is a... a um, there is a Misha that is asking from Facebook, uh, is uh, uh, how can we teach the value, the importance of privacy to our children? Um, I don't think we need to teach the importance of privacy to our children. I think they know it already. Um, I think they are ill served by the design of the digital environment. So they find themselves sharing or needing to share or um, unexpectedly sharing because they don't always have the data literacy, um, if you like, or some of the advanced media literacy. But I think children have a, um, from all my interviews with, with children and young people, they have a very strong sense of um, privacy um, and indeed of kind of embarrassment and shame and what's fair and who should know what. They, they want that control but they are, their communication is now in a complicated and opaque digital space where the tools and the design is often for adults and doesn't explain itself properly to children. Yeah, um, that's so I think they're let down. Mm. Yeah. Is uh, that that's interesting? Uh, is I know generally speaking that uh, some time uh, we do have also worry about things that we shouldn't. Uh, is uh, because of, because of the it is not a, a problem or it has already been solved. Uh, is uh, the um, time is really going uh, super fast. Uh, is uh, <laughs> I <laughs> is uh, I'm I'm really I think that uh, I don't know what about you, but I could uh, stay here for the next couple of days. Uh, the, <laughs> you know this long <laughs> I'm, I'm not of... going anywhere. <laughs> Those long chats of some, uh, no, who was a Fidel Castro that was capable of having a speech that was lasting two days. <laughs> but I think we, we, for the sake of, of the structure of, of this conversation, I, I'd love to have you, maybe so we, we can plan another and, and a separate conversation later on in, the, in these conversations. Uh, the, uh, but I have to, to wrap it up uh, for, for the moment. Uh, I would have liked uh, to 
in fact I do even if we are running uh, uh, late, uh, is uh, if you feel that there is a question that I should have asked you but I didn't, which is the um, question, the, the, the wise or, or, or think a uh, question that, uh, that you think, uh, oh, that's a good one. Um, actually, I, I think you, I mean, I love that you, you, you read the book and you, um, asked me the, the lots of really, um, good questions. Um, hmm, a question I wanted to be asked. I think I wanted a little more to convey the enormous differences of the, um, family situations. So for example, in the book, we have, um, uh, a chapter about um, children who have special educational needs and disabilities. And I maybe kind of want to make sure that when we talk about children or parents, we don't always homogenize and um, not that you did, but it, it's easy to do. Um, and just recognize the, um, a lot of the kind of different uh, struggles um, that people have and how for so many people digital technologies seem like an answer, seem like a workaround, seem like a compensation for the lack in the rest of their lives. And um, so, you know, we, we, we talk a lot about the problems of the digital, but it is often the solution for people. And that's one reason that they are involved in all these acrobatics. Yeah. Is uh, D, uh, Yun is asking whether we can find uh, your book uh, on uh, uh, oh, an ebook, uh, I mean, is in digital form. Uh, can it um, be bought? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It can. It's um, okay. Type answer, it says here. Type. I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Is a uh, while uh, you you do that uh, is uh, uh, well I, I, I obviously want to to thank you it was a really a nice way for uh, for me to, uh, to to spend and to, to as I say at the beginning I feel quite uh, quite privileged uh, is uh, in uh, in uh, that's the reason why I, I started this initiative in, is is a very selfish one I found it a trick to talk to interesting people. <laughs> And uh, uh, I also would like to thank all the people that uh, not only have followed us uh, from, uh, from uh, Zoom, uh, but uh, from, uh, from Facebook. The, if, uh, if you want to connect with uh, Sonia, I think that Lara will put up uh, the, the, the slide again uh, with all your uh, handles and Twitter and, uh, and uh, social uh, media uh, things uh, for update and, and uh, they can check uh, is uh, uh, your, your website also. I would uh, uh, um, encourage uh, uh, any of you who is willing uh, to, to send us uh, some feedback. Uh, how can we make, uh, this is a bit of an experiment, uh, is uh, how can we make this conversation uh, uh, better? So is, uh, is, uh, uh, we love to hear from you. If you want to, to hear or to know more about the AVI that I was supposed to introduced at the very beginning but I didn't uh, you can go uh, online uh, is uh, if you want to have fun uh, you can also do the the, the AVI test uh, uh, that is uh, online tomorrow uh, we have uh, uh, Divina Frau Meix uh, which is another big name of media literacy at the same time um, so thank you Sonia it was uh, really lovely <laughs> thank you so much Paolo it was, it was fun you asked me different questions. That was good. <laughs> it's a good luck with everything. And I really hope that we'll have the opportunity to speak about these and other issues soon. Ciao. Bye.